So, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to start uh, by thanking Greg for giving me a chance to talk to you here today. Uh, and I'll probably start with a brief introduction who we are and where we come from. So, uh, uh, I'm from SATEC, which is an uh, institute uh, in Brno. Uh, Brno, those of you who haven't been uh, there yet, is uh, roughly one and a half hour drive uh, north from Vienna. Uh, we have this uh, this institute, which uh, is uh, uh, not only a research institute, but uh, also harbors uh, ten uh, different core facilities specializing in different techniques. And one of them uh, is uh, electron microscopy, uh, EM, uh, and I will represent that facility. Our EM facility is a relatively compact facility. We have uh, one high-end transmission electron microscope, one. Uh, one what we call screening transmission electron microscope and one small dual beam system which we use for this very interesting uh, projects of uh, lamella preparation and imaging uh, which I also uh, mentioned later. Uh, but I, I would like to uh, give a short uh, uh, introduction of what we actually do and can do uh, with our, our instrumentation uh, on one project. And that's a, a study of the polyvalent staphylococcal bacteriophages. You probably all know that uh, uh, bacterial infections are normally treated uh, by the antibiotics, and that's a very effective way of uh, the bac uh, treatment of the uh, bacterial infections. However, uh, whenever there, there is a, a new antibiotic introduced in the market, uh, there is sooner or later a strain, bacterial strain, uh, which is resistant to this particle uh, antibiotics. And there was a relatively long period uh, between the 70s and uh, 90s where there was no new antibiotics uh, introduced to the market. And even though there were two new products introduced in early uh, or late 2000, the, the, uh, right after that, uh, strains found strains which were resistant to, uh, to those antibiotics. Uh, an alternative uh, the antibiotic uh, or antibiotic treatment uh, might uh, in the future be the th therapeutic use of the natural enemies of bacteria, uh, the viruses of bacteria. Uh, and in this particular case, we're talking about the, the bacteriophages. Uh, and that's also one of the projects that we've studied. We, uh, we've been studying the polyvagal staphylococcal bacteriophage, which is called Phi A112. Uh, uh, this, this bacteriophage has uh, been shown uh, to be active against a uh, large number of uh, methicillin resistant, resistant uh, staphylococcus strains. And uh, our aim at this stage, as, a, as an electron microscope and a structural biologist, uh, was to characterize structurally uh, the, the phage in its native form uh, and the form. After, after the infection, after it uh, infects uh, the cell, which we call a contracted form. So we use the cryo-electron microscopy uh, to do that, and also use this, uh, what we call a divide and conquer approach. So we basically, in order to learn about individual parts of the, of the, uh, of the phage, we uh, uh, determine multiple, multiple structures of, of its individual parts, and let me see if the divide video works. <laughs> so, uh, in the end, we basically were able to, to reconstruct uh, individual parts of the, of the bacteriophage uh, to sub nanometer resolution. So, now we uh, have a lot of information about individual uh, components of the phage. So, the phage as itself uh, is composed of, of, the, of the capsid, uh, which is icosahedra. And uh, it uh, basically encapsulates uh, uh, the double-stranded DNA genome of, of the phage. Uh, then uh, there, there is a connector which connects the, the bacteriophage head uh, to, to, its, to its tail. Uh, the, the tail as such uh, is composed of two, two tubes. There are inner tubes which channel the DNA uh, to the host. And, uh, and the outer tube, tube, which is responsible for the contraction. 
Uh, and then uh, the base plate, uh, which uh, is responsible for uh, substrate recognition, so the, for the recognition of the of the host uh, uh, interaction with the host, and uh, it also initiates uh, the the whole in, uh, process of uh, infection. So uh, in the in the end, or well, uh, at the current state, we have determined the structure of the head to a 3.8 uh, angstrom resolution. We have a four four angstrom uh, resolution uh, structure of the connector region, and uh, between three and four uh, angstrom uh, resolution structures of the of the tail, which allows us for for this part of the, the phase to to build and determine the the atomic resolution models of individual protein proteins which form uh, this this uh, large assembly. Uh, we are on a bit lower side with the base plate because it's relatively flexible and only so far achieved roughly 6 to 7 angstrom resolution reconstruction of that, which still enables us to perform a secondary structure alignments on the probe. So, uh, briefly discuss the individual components. Uh, so the, the phage head forms an uh, icosahedron, uh, which is a T16, uh, and uh, it's composed of the, what's called a major capsid protein, uh, shown shown here. Uh, the the major capsid for, pro, protein has a, a, a HK97 fold, which is one of the uh, folds uh, present uh, uh, prim, prim in, the, in the viruses and phages. But apart from, from the, this part, which is in blue, uh, green, uh, yellow, and cyan, which is a kind of standard HK97, it also has this extension domain, which uh, then protrudes from uh, outward uh, from the, uh, from the uh, capsid and forms uh, this kind of uh, tripodic shapes. And in the, in the middle uh, of the tripodic shapes, all these extension domains interact uh, through a cement protein, which further stabilizes the, uh, the capsid. Uh, the tail, uh, as I already mentioned, is composed of uh, two tubes. It is an inner tube, which is non-contractile, and, and the outer, outer tube, which contracts uh, upon uh, uh, the host recognition. The contraction basically then brings uh, the, uh, the outer tube uh, towards, towards the phage head, and uh, enables the inner tube to protrude through uh, the cell wall inside the bacteria. Uh, the, uh, uh, the whole assembly of the, of the whole tube assembly uh, forms a, heli a helical structure, uh, which is uh, composed of these uh, uh, rings or discs uh, with a C6, uh, C6 symmetry. And all of it is basically made, uh, uh, made of two proteins. It is a tail tube protein, which is uh, uh, shown in purple here, and uh, the tail sheet protein, which we here divide uh, into uh, four different domains. Uh, the inner domain, which is shown in cyan, basically interacts with the tail tube and forms, uh, uh, and, uh, forms these disks. Uh, attached uh, to the individual specks of the, the tail tube proteins, whereas the outer domains, uh, shown in green, blue, and red, uh, form uh, in the native state uh, interactions within the ring, uh, thus supporting the stability of the ring and also allowing uh, flexibility of the, of the whole tail. Uh, the situation changes upon the, the contraction. Uh, the interaction between the domain 4, which is in uh, cyan, with the tail tube is lost. Uh, and uh, the uh, interaction within the domains 1, 2, 3 uh, are no longer within a single disk, but uh, they, they change and uh, interact within the subsequent disks. Uh, meaning that uh, basically the domain, domain 4 uh, forms kind of a right-handed helical assembly. Uh, whereas the, the interactions uh, within the domains 1, 2, 3 form uh, uh, something which we call a left helix uh, uh, assembly, uh, which in the end uh, plays a role in the higher stability and rigidity of the, uh, of the tail after the, after the contraction. So the base plate uh, is very complex and very start. 
uh, and uh, it's basically composed of two uh, two rings, the inner ring and outer ring of uh, the receptor uh, binding proteins, uh, which are shown here in uh, orange and red. And the receptor binding protein, together with the, the tri tripod proteins, which we call tripod proteins, shown in cyan and blue, form uh, a, what we call a receptor tripod complex. And here uh, what we show uh, what we uh, show here is, is the base plate after the contraction. So uh, after the conformational change, which leads uh, to the to the interaction with the uh, with the host. So you, you see that uh, you can see that they are uh, arranged as a, as a two rings, and they are also they have, there are uh, proteins which uh, attach uh, the whole base plate uh, to the to the tail sheet. If we go further, here uh, we have the, the same uh, picture of the uh, face plate after the contraction, and you can see that both uh, of the receptor tripod complexes uh, are pointing with the receptors uh, towards uh, the putative uh, cell wall direction. Whereas uh, in the, in the uh, native form, the, the situation is completely different. There, only the inner uh, receptor tripod complex uh, is pointing towards the putative cell wall, uh, whereas the, the outer ring uh, receptor tripod complex is com uh, turned completely opposite uh, in the other direction and points towards the bacteriophage head. And uh, as you can see here, the, this uh, outer ring receptor tripod complex interacts with the tail sheet protein, and this is what we uh, believe uh, is a trigger of the uh, of the uh, tail sheet contraction, because once this interaction is lost, uh, there is no stabilization for for this tail sheet protein and the tail sheet can uh, then uh, contract from its metastable native state into the more uh, thermodynamically stable contract contracted form. Uh, when we were analyzing the data, we've uh, seen uh, that uh, we, apart from the native phages and the phages uh, uh, with the contracted tails and uh, uh, empty heads, meaning that the DNA has been released from, from the head, we also see phages, uh, particles, where uh, the tail is contracted, but there is still uh, DNA in the in the head. And we then took these three species and determined uh, the structures uh, of the the connector regions and uh, found out that uh, in the uh, for this uh, state where the tail is contracted, <coughs> uh, but uh, there is still DNA in the in the connector. Uh, there is a conformational change in, in this in this portal, uh, which probably prevents uh, and and also at the beginning of the tail tube, which uh, probably prevents the uh, DNA to protrude through the uh, 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 through the tail tube inside inside the, or outside the, the phage. And uh, this uh, this is uh, basically. Uh, Confirmation of what was proposed earlier in the literature that with these myeloidia phages, uh, the, the contraction process is not a single step, but, but it's rather two, two step regulated, uh, where the initial or uh, the, the initi initialization of the tail sheet contraction does uh, not necessarily uh, initialize also the uh, uh, elution of the DNA or uh, doesn't allow the DNA to directly go uh, outside outside the bacteria uh, the phage. So in I mean next step we're uh, more interested in how uh, the phages behave in situ. So we uh, performed cryo-electron tomography or, or on the phages infecting the, the Staphylococcus aureus, the bacteria, uh, in order to uh, uh, Assure ourselves, uh, or confirm that the structure uh, after the after the the, the base plate structure after the uh, infection uh, is uh, same as uh, uh, we have uh, from from the in uh, uh, vitro data. Uh, but ultimately, we want to pursue this further, or we are pursuing this further, and we want to learn also about the process how the phages get uh, get assembled inside. 
uh, inside the, uh, the bacteria. But since these are gram positives, you, see, you can see the, the very thick uh, cell wall made from the bacteroglycan. Uh, it, uh, it is difficult uh, to obtain such information uh, from uh, cryotron tomography only. And that's where we uh, aim, or it's one of the projects uh, we use uh, the fit milling uh, for. But uh, before I go to that, and that will be my, my final slides, I, I will briefly summarize this project. So we've been able to structurally characterize uh, uh, the uh, polyvalent staphyl of uh, bacteriophage from the, from the family myoviridae and uh, basically uh, found out that uh, the, comp uh, the mechanism uh, of the uh, 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 host recognition and the base plate re reorganization uh, also initiates the tail sheet contraction and we also found out uh, that uh, the ejection of the of the back, uh, uh, phage DNA is not a, a single step uh, uh, single step regulated process, but it's rather a uh, two step regulated process. So uh, now I'd like to basically go more towards the, the technical uh, issues related to, to the to the facility. So we are primarily uh, we are, uh, as facility we are over working in an open access mode and we uh, serve both uh, internal and external type of users but uh, getting uh, high-end data for doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't uh, only mean that you uh, or you need only the microscope that's what I wanted to say so having only the microscope uh, doesn't provide all what you need uh, to get uh, efficiently high-end uh, high data nowadays. Uh, so what we do, uh, or we, we are lucky to have this infrastructure uh, behind the microscope which allows us to do uh, the uh, pre-processing of the data in real time and also uh, allows us to storage the relatively large amounts of the data which nowadays come from the electron microscope. Since we do the, uh, the data pre-processing in uh, real time, we can also do the data quality mo monitoring in real time. And that's what we basically do uh, uh, as well, that we take the data, uh, analyze it, and uh, generate an HTML page, which we then provide, uh, which is then available to the user, so that he can check whether the data collection, uh, uh, which is automated, so it's non-supervised, non uh, primarily uh, goes well, and we also use it to check that, uh, that the instrument works uh, as, as, it, uh, as it should. So, um, this is to show that uh, there are uh, results uh, coming from uh, our, our equipment at the moment, and I would primarily mention that there are results coming from uh, the internal users, the users within the SATEC. However, there are a lot of also uh, results which uh, come uh, from uh, the external external uh, people which don't have any relation uh, to SATEC. Uh, so the last three slides will be devo devoted to uh, this focus on the micro machine. So we are equipped with the, this uh, small dual beam system. So this is the scanning electron microscope with focused ion beam. Focused ion beam uh, is a, a source of gallium ions which are focused and used uh, uh, to, uh, for, for uh, basically surface visualization similar uh, to as, as the electrons. Uh, this system is also equipped with a cryotransfer line so that a uh, vitrified sample or the samples uh, at vitreous, vitreous conditions can be insert, uh, inserted uh, into the microscope and kept at, uh, kept at, this, uh, kept at this, that conditions during the during data collection, uh, etc. And what we use this mainly for uh, is that we would like to, to do the in situ structural biology, basically to, to learn about the, the macromolecular complexes uh, in the context of the, of the cell. Since uh, we, for many of those, have already gotten stru their structures in vitro, we're not aiming uh, at this stage uh, at su uh, super high resolution structural biology in, uh, in situ. However, we believe uh, 
or uh, we rather aim at uh, basically uh, fitting the known structures into the uh, what uh, what we see in the uh, in situ lab. Well, so for that, we first need to basically, uh, if we need to do that, we uh, need to uh, grow the, the cells, the individual cells, uh, on uh, the support material. For us, the support material is a TEM grid with a uh, carbon foil on it. I'm nearly there. Um, and, uh, you see, uh, and each of these blobs, as you can see, is the single cell grown on the, on the uh, carbon support uh, and the uh, surface. Uh, then such, such a, uh, cells, as you can see from, from their size, uh, this is a 5 micrometer, are actually non-transparent to tra transmission of the electrons. So we can't take these samples, insert them in the transmission electron microscope and then uh, use it. Uh, or acquire electron and tri-electron tomography data on that. Uh, what we do instead, or what is done instead, it's not only us who is doing it, uh, uh, and we haven't developed it actually, uh, we use the, the gallium ions to, to remove the, uh, the organic material to, uh, to make this uh, basically uh, cell thinner and generate a very thin, thin lamella uh, from the cell, which is that electron transparent and can be uh, transferred to the transmission electron microscope for further imaging. And here I show just two examples. This is uh, just uh, an image of such a lamella from the, from the HeLa cells. Uh, you can see that there are a lot of things, but it might be uh, at some point very, very difficult uh, to. Uh, uh, know uh, what, what, what is what. Therefore, the, the a priori information uh, from the in vitro studies um, uh, might be very useful for us. Uh, and uh, the, the projects we are primarily working on and are interested in is, is the uh, studying of the life cycle of the viruses or phages uh, in the cells. And this is, uh, these are the vaccinia viruses in uh, different, different uh, cell lines. Uh, this project, actually, or this uh, project is kind of, uh, it's not only time demanding, uh, but the, the reproducibility is relatively low. So that, that's why we've uh, set this project within the uh, uh, Ultra, together with uh, Nissan, Strasbourg, and uh, Oxford, Oxford, or EBIC, EBIC is the correct, uh, where we aim uh, to optimize the conditions for uh, cell preparation and uh, lamella, lamella milling in order to increase the throughput of this technology because the, the main issue in our case uh, or nowadays in this technology is a little throughput. So that's all from my side. I thank you for your attention.